Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we will continue our work on the Kenwood TS450S and try to repair the problem with the RX TX switching, the time delay. I have some ideas what it could be. I'm thinking of bad ground connections or so. Therefore I switched on my scope and I will try to, some, to do some dynamic measurements. First I will do some measurements with a scope. I'm measuring the output TXB from the TRX unit. There's a voltage with, which it switches on and off the uh, transmit path. <coughs> the RXB is the inverted path. It's behind this uh, inverter, but I'm measuring TXB which is delayed. For this purpose I use uh, my scope. For this purpose I would prefer to use uh, my, my three or four channels I have here, but <coughs> unfortunately it's necessary to hold the probe by hand. It's not possible to get a contact with a clip or so. And whereas this uh, signal is, it's too complicated. I'm measuring only one signal and I, I know what I'm doing when I uh, release the PTT button. I will tell it. So first I will tell it with pin 5. Uh, sorry, yes, pin 5 of this unit. One moment, that is pin 5. I have to prevent any short circuit. And now I switch TRX on. And now I switch off. I switch T off. And the signal has one nearly two seconds delay. We have one second per division and one volt per division. Sorry, two volt. Two, four, six, eight volt. So we have here a delay of one and a half up to two seconds. That's what we know between switching off or releasing the, the button and the actual switching off. We've measured here the output TXP. Now we're measuring the input of this unit. That's the output of the break-in unit, pin 3. We measure here. This uh, output is divided by this voltage divider and fed to the uh, switching transistor, pin 3. We also expect here a voltage of approximately 8 volt or so. We have 8 volt supply voltage, so pin 3 is now our important pin. 1, 2, 3. We make single. And now I switch on PTT and off. And what we see here is a little bit irritating. We have a instantaneously falling edge when I release the PTT button, but we have here still the output voltage. And after two seconds, it goes down to zero. So we have here a weird signal which could not be part of a of a digital output. I make the picture a little bit bigger. Here I release the PTT button. The signal fell down but not down to zero. We have two volt per division so this is 0 0.6 volt, 0 0.7 volt or so. And then after two seconds, it came, it, uh, it fell down to zero. And here the PTT uh, lit disappeared. Interesting. Shouldn't be such a signal. I would expect going down to zero because we have the output of a digital signal. We can expect here a digital signal, high, low. This is the output of this IC, but it isn't. But here we have diodes, I have to check this signal 8. Maybe if this makes trouble, I will check it. Because signal 8 also goes via these diodes to this point. Let's measure pin 8. Now I'm measuring this pin 8. I press the PTT button and now I release it. Uh -huh. That 
there is also such a slope here and the relay is switched off here in this range so I think that's not a problem we have here again a voltage of approximately 1.5 1.6 volt output this is this voltage pin 8 which is coming out of pin 10 and this is the inversion of the standby switch standby switch is this one and this is inverted by this transistor this gate is switched on with a TX inhibit so this output voltage drops down to zero when the uh, switch is open standby switch and when it's standby switch is on when it is in the transmit position this pulse goes high we have it goes high but the negative slope is not perfect uh -huh. I'm not sure whether this is a problem could be but the uh, uh, one two three four seconds if the switching off is uh, happened here so the voltage was down so I'm quite sure that's not a problem I made some measurements of other pins 8 volt for example it is stable or a CKW that's a CW, CW keying so there's a stable signal RPC also but here I found a strange behavior this input uh, to switch on this capacitor it's for the timing for the CW brake circuit to switch on this additional capacitor this voltage should be zero unless in mode CW then this should become 8 volt and then we have here 8 volt and this transistor here gets conductive in all other modes CW8 is zero I've measured it it is zero when it is not zero we have here via this diode this capacitor charged and also this capacitor is switched on this is a timing circuit for CW but in SSB mode when I check it this CW8 is indeed zero I measured it but here on pin 10 I have an absolute strange behavior there's a voltage appearing this capacitor is charged up I don't know why there is no other voltage source here first I will show it what I've measured and then we can discuss the result I have contact to this pin I switch on to PTT now I switch PTT off and here the relay clicked so the transmit was really switched off but here we have a voltage 2 volt per division the probe is set one by one and one second per division I show it more clearly what is this? why? where does it come from? we have a voltage of 4 volt in the peak not stable flickering and then this electrolytic capacitor is discharged here this se seems to be charged up but here it is discharged I don't understand what's going on there let's have again a look in, in the schematic this is a voltage at pin 10 what we just have seen CW8 is zero I've measured it it is zero if it wouldn't be zero we would have of course a voltage but we have zero what is possible bad capacitor no this capacitor is charged up and discharged what could it be a bad capacitor a shorted cap there wouldn't be a voltage loss of capacity why should there appear a voltage because we, we have here a grounding via this uh, transistor the two resistors go to ground I don't know the value I assume they have some kilo ohms not more so this capacitor is discharged and that's what we see at the end of the signal when the capacitor is discharged bad diode what can a bad diode have discontinuity interruption okay no voltage is possible a short circuit shorted diode could be possible but when we have zero voltage this capacitor is discharged down to zero I only have one explanation that here we have the voltage fed back from this point here this means that ground is not ground I only can say in the moment this ground here what we see 
is a little bit isolated or the whole potential of this circuit is shifted up and then it is fed back and charges up this capacitor here. In the moment I have no other explanation. We also have seen strange output signals <coughs> which do not go to ground immediately. I strongly assume we have a problem inside this circuit. Bad ground connections, maybe the problem is outside. I will check these ground pins, pin 1 and pin 11, whether it is really ground. But I, I think I have to take out this unit and to measure it. Now I'm checking the ground connections of this uh, module, pin 11. I will increase the sensitivity. One volt per division. When I switch to transmit, nothing happens. I go to the other side, pin one. Nothing. This is pin 2, just for, for reference. Uh, sorry, there's nothing. Should go to pin 3. Uh, pin 3 is 8 volt. I'm gonna go down to, to receive. Well, The grounding seems to be okay from, from the outer world, so I have to take out this complete unit. It's rather easy to flip out the board, only two flat ribbon cables have to be unplugged, this and this. Open some screws and then we can flip it out. A layer is necessary, now we have access to the lower side and then we can unsolder the unit, the break-in unit, which is soldered here. The BK unit is out. It's stored here safely on this uh, electrostatic material. I connected a push-button switch between pin 3 and 4. And this is this location between 3 and 4. This part is not existing, so I'm simulating the output of the um, BK unit, which comes from these diodes and goes to the TRX unit here. I'm simulating this output going high with the push button between 8 volt pin 4 and 3 volts that's the output which is going to the TUX and so I can simulate the BK unit activating the rest is not important for this purpose because it's uh, combined with the delay unit I only want to see whether I can control now instantaneously the TXB output or not or what happens to see what's going on there And now first test with the push button switch, I press it on, wait some seconds, watch this LED on, wait some seconds and now I, I release the push button off, you see still a delay. And now a measurement at the input of the TRX unit pin 2 where the uh, push button is connected via a small resistor. I press down the push button and now leave, let it off and we see same behavior as we already had. When I let the push button off the voltage drops but the uh, transmit LED 
and the relay clicking inside is done here and not here. We still have a delay of 1.3, 1.2 seconds. It varies a little bit, but in general we still have a delay. And we have measured at this input. Here's push button via this resistor combination, 15k, 100k. I'm measuring here the voltage, which is the input of this um, transistor. And here we have this step, as we can see here and here. And I, now I go to the output. It is pin 5. It is a switch transistor, which is switched by this transistor via the input. What's happening here? But I think we have still a delay at pin 5. Uh, now the measurement at pin 5, the output. I press the push button and off. Same delay, 1.3 seconds. That means we still have a delay. From here, from, from this switch, up to this output. And the delay is obviously generated anywhere here. I really don't understand at the moment what's going on. I don't think that this circuit has an influence. But maybe I'm wrong. I have to think about it. A short discussion regarding this circuit here and the input impedance of at pin 2. We have here a transistor. DTC 114TK. This transistor, I found the data sheet in the net. It's all in Japanese, but the most important information is here. We have here two resistors, R1, R2. They are part of this uh, module. And for the DTC version, we have an R1 of 10k and R2 is not existing. So we have here 10k and here we have nothing. That means we have here a rather high input impedance and the input is grounded only via this 100 kilo ohm resistor. Should be sufficient, but when we have here an output of this unit, of this break-in unit, we have a voltage of 8 volt supply, so the output voltage is maybe 7.8 or so, minus diode, so we have an output voltage of 7.4 volt, 7.3 volt here. But most important is what do we have in the low position. In general, these outputs don't go absolutely too low, and the diode uh, voltage drop is rather low, so maybe we have here some 100 millivolt output. And here we have 15k and 100k to ground, this is not a voltage divider. The uh, 15k is uh, is very low compared to 100k, so the voltage which comes in here goes through and may be sufficient to control this transistor a little bit, not to completely close it down. Maybe this is the reason for the problem we have. So I think we should uh, try to connect the resistor here in parallel. I think also 15k. So we have totally 15k and 15k or a little bit less, 12k or so, which is the division by 2 plus 10k in series. This could be a, a better shutdown of this transistor, better grounding on the base. And therefore this transistor is better blocked because if there is a little current coming in, we have this better here and a better here. So this could cause the transistor to not to uh, shut down immediately, but with a delay. Let's try it with a 15k resistor in parallel. I have here a resistor 15k with a clip lead. I will connect it to pin 2 to the input of the TOX board as we discussed. And here with this push button, I will uh, activate the PTT. And now when you have a look at the LED, 
on, off, on, off, on, off. It works as it should when I remove the resistor. On, delay again, on, off, and we have a delay. That means there's obviously an isolation problem or something like this. Maybe there's a feedback from the output to the input. So a small voltage is derived. I don't know exactly what happens. But I assume because we see after the, uh, after the, the delay, the voltage in the input drops again parallel with the output. So it seems that there is a connection, a high ohmic connection. And I saw another ugly thing this electrolytic cap here he had obviously a problem in the past because uh, I see here signs of leakage and one of the previous owners replaced it by a new one but the copper traces are not clear I hope that we do not have similar problems here with this electrolytic caps and therefore we have a problem with isolation of, of the traces could be because uh, it's a little bit suspicious why is this resistor necessary to operate up to now it was not necessary when the transceiver left the factory it was okay something happened this could be a possible problem isolation problems maybe also on this board here on this little module that there's a problem i show you what i mean this pin 2 was loaded with a 15k resistor to ground or in parallel to this 100k then it's okay we have seen that in pin 2 the voltage drops goes down and then it stays at a rather high voltage in the range of uh, 1.5 1.6 volt and then it drops suddenly and this could mean that there is a, a path from here to here because this when when it drops here down from 8 volt to 0 this voltage here drops also exactly in parallel maybe there is a, a bypass high ohmic bypass caused by dirt or leaking electrolytics or any other problem i have to check it i will take out the board again and make a very very thorough uh, um, investigation I have no other idea in the moment. I will try an, uh, another experiment. This is uh, a voltage at pin 2. We have 1 volt per division. We see here when I release the knob, the voltage drops down to 0 0.5 volt. And here the uh, relay clicks inside. This is a switching from TX to RX. And here we have the voltage drop from 0 0.6 to 0 0.2 volt. What happens here, I don't know. Looks like a capacitive coupling or so, whatever it is. And then it goes down to zero, or not not zero, but uh, it also is slowly discharged. It's a strange, very strange thing. And now I try to do it uh, with a resistor in parallel. And this is the same picture with the resistor in parallel. I managed it. It was not so difficult. We see here a sudden drop and sudden switching to the RX from TX to RX and not this long slope. Where the slope comes from, I don't understand. My scope has an input of one mega ohm. I'm using it in the position times one, the probe. We have now 2 volt and here it goes down to 0. I will have something to examine. Both modules are out. The break-in unit and the TRX unit. These are the installation locations. These are the two units. I will check all contacts, see whether there are any problems with leaking electrolytics or so also on the bottom side and then do some measurements regarding isolation by the way here is an additional electrolytic cap which is not shown in the uh, schematic but it is connected to point seven it's connected to this pin 
and it's just a blocking capacitor to ground so this cannot uh, cause the problems looks a little bit strange but it is not 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 dangerous now i have to look for carefully for any signs of leakage but there is it's all it's all dry as i see only the uh, flux i used to to desolder it i did it with a pump and uh, a little bit flux difficult to get it out it's a question of patience but now they, now they are out and uh, we can check it first step is i clean the two modules we can use isopropyl alcohol or oh you see there's some dirt on it is it raisin or whatever it is i'm not sure or some uh, cleaning uh, gasoline whatever you have at hand but no solvent do not use any solvents would be deadly do not forget the space between the pins i use such a interdental floss they are good for this purpose to clean the pins or the material between the pins, the spaces between the pins on both sides. It's getting cleaner. Now I cleaned the two locations, the pin rows or the hole rows, not the pins, the holes. There's a lot of dirt. Don't know what it is. Suspicious. It is not from the soldering, not from me. Maybe it was there. But it's real dirt. Uh huh. Okay, I have to do something. I think we have found the problem. There's a problem on this board this little module has an isolation problem between the pins I cleaned it very thoroughly as good as I could we have here pins number two that's where we have observed the strange behavior when we grounded it with 15k to ground and it was okay three and four is not used and five is the output I said there could be a coupling from here to here because when this goes high this also goes high by some millivolt and when this drops this drops also and when we pull it down to 15k it's okay the switching behavior no delay no problem I measured the ohmic resistances from here to here from here to here and here to here same arrangement as we have here this is the module Pin 1 on the right is ground, 2 is the input, this is this one which goes to the transistor, Q153, this is this one, here we have the resistor, R151, which we swapped due to some damage, and pins 3 and 4 here are not used, there are no wires connected, also on the rear side, 3 and 4, nothing connected. So we should measure infinite. And let's see, oops, let's see what we measure. By the way, I measured it with my analog ohmmeter and my digital. There's no essential difference. I'm measuring from two to three, from here to here should be infinite. So you can see it. Now you can see it from two to three, and we have three mega ohm. When I reverse the polarity, also three mega ohm. Cannot be from here to here three mega ohm, it has to be infinite. From, but there's a, a more uh, Bigger problem from, from three to four, both are isolated. Three to four, we measure six mega ohm, six dot five, 
I reverse the polarity. 5, 4, 5, 5. And now from 4 to 5. Nine. I reverse the polarity. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Reverse it again. Eight. Okay, we see we have resistances in the ohm range from here to here, here to here, and here to here, which can not be. And this is obviously the problem when we have here several mega ohms in series we have 100k so the 8 volt is divided by 20 40 50 or so so from 8 volt we have here some 100 millivolt coupled coupled via this 100k and this is sufficient to keep this transistor conductive this is a problem when you make it low ohmic with 15k in parallel then the problem is solved as we have seen so indeed we have a problem from here to here. Then now I see we should measure from five to six. Ah, oh, that's okay. Uh, 180 mega ohm. Okay. This this can be accepted. And from six to seven, from here to here. Okay, 140. Let's measure 7 to 8. Nothing. 8 to 9. Infinite. 9 to 10. Infinite. So here it is better, but here we have a problem. We have a problem with the isolation on the board. Can't imagine what's going on there. And these are the approximate values I've measured: 10 meg, 7 meg, 4 meg. So totally we have here <coughs> 20 mega ohms, 100 k. So the voltage division is approximately 200. But this is of course voltage depending. Uh, the measurement voltage is rather low from the ohmmeter and uh, maybe polarity or so on but it makes obvious that when you have here 8 volt there are some 100 millivolts appearing which is not uh, not so difficult and as we have seen it's sufficient to have q153 let it be conductive for for a second or so now i do the same procedure on the board on pins one, two, three, four, five, as we have on the module between two and three. Uh huh. There's also resistance 60 ohm, 60 mega ohm. Shouldn't be there. Between three and four, there is nothing or infinite. And four and five, there's also infinite B between again two and three. Mm -hmm. I reverse the polarity. Similar result. But pin three is not connected. We have to look into the layout. On pin 3 there is nothing. Again, it's this pin on the board. No connection. Suspicious, suspicious. Well, but that's what I've assumed. We have an isolation problem here on the board. I don't know what happened. It looks a little bit suspicious because one of these pins is blank copper. Again, we uh, remember we had the, the damaged resistor. There was something on it, this gray powder, oxide or so. Whatever happened, whatever happened here, 
This is not okay. With this result we are at the end of part 2 of the series about the Kenwood TS450S. We have seen strange things are happening on the board and in the module. Isolation problem, I don't know what the reason is. Was there damage with a leaking cap and one of the pre-owners uh, cured it, but not was not thorough enough, but I don't see any signs of a leaking cap and all the capacitors, the electrolytic caps are the original ones, they are still in place, I don't see any uh, solder connections which have been uh, reworked or so. Or do we have a problem with humidity? In those days some materials were not so good in the quality. I will try to, to dry the module with heat or with uh, over temperature, not with heat. I don't want to melt it. I will use my, my heat gun or I will lay it into the oven. We will see whether it uh, improves the isolation. It would be a, a hint that we have a problem with humidity. Anyhow, we have still something to do. Stay tuned, stay healthy. See you on this channel.